time, so I'm thanking. Um, and this is my project, the classic scene. Um, so this is my, I graduated in the summer from Search St. Martins, um, and I, my, I did jewellery design, so that's like my background, this and then. Um, all my kind of work so far to do with plastic has been kind of um, object-based uh, and uh, like small things on the body or like thinking about uh, like context of jewellery, so like how you value materials and objects and stuff like that. Um, so uh, I was doing my final uh, graduate collection where I started like thinking a lot about plastic because um, it's like ever said, you make all this stuff and it's just like it just feels very excessive. So I wanted to work with um, waste materials to like negate that there. Um, and then also this is an issue that is becoming more prevalent. Um, and then when you start researching it, it's like so multifaceted and there are so many like, smaller issues in it. Um, so I wanted to raise some awareness, I guess. And then also um, show that these materials can be like transformed and elevated into uh, objects that can be valued. Um, yes. So um, I work with uh, everything's made out of discarded fishing nets, old broken fishing nets and fishing rope, and then um, plastic uh, beach debris that's collected and the nets were donated from a uh, fishery into recycling, like disposing their nets in sustainable ways. Um, and with the swimming hats, the idea behind it was sort of uh, like when you transform, you can get some different colours and textures, and kind of the reaction people have is like, oh, like it's like fun, and um, everyone wants to like, touch it and stuff. And then you're like, oh, it's like this old broken fishing net, and talking about ghost fishing and like, all these things. And there's this like uh, the initial reaction you have to the visual jars against the. the reality of where the materials come from uh, and I think that contrast can have quite an impact on people when they like their initial reaction compared to uh, what they learn after and then we have a sort of conflict where it still looks nice but uh, much more kind of uncomfortable thinking it looks nice. Um, yeah and I was listening how sort of home uh, you know like, you have these sort of glamorous pictures of pristine beaches and everyone's like frolicking on them and having fun and that's quite far really from the reality nowadays like these beaches are very polluted and they're not sort of like dying and so that's really And so that's uh, I also did some like longer, more like chain lace pieces um, and this is kind of, yeah, related to like jewelry and like pearls and beads and I think about how uh, plastic can bring the new material from the sea to use, um, and also you know, nerves, lots of like the tiny pallets, lots of people don't know about them, um, and yes, stuff like that. And also, like, thinking about like, these long chains, are like thousands of them, and um, they're still on the reel, so you can add to them. So, the idea of like, when you think about plastic, it's the amount of days. Overwhelming and never ending, you can never um, like clear it all up, you can never like get to the end of that. So, sort of thinking pieces that can also always be continued because there's always more plastic to add to the chain, so to speak. Um, yes, so like through transforming materials, um, I wanted to um, have a initial visual engagement that would translate into um, more of a uh, reconsideration of like how we view and value plastic um, and show the transform transformation potential um, of it as a material. Um, 
Yes. Also, lots of the um, stuff to do with plastic, often uh, the material can then still look like waste material, and so then uh, it can engage some people, but then a lot of people, they just like don't want to kind of look at something which is about a pleasant topic, and then like looks quite unpleasant because the topic is unpleasant, but then it brought there's, there are other ways to engage people that don't necessarily respond to that type of art and so that is what I am sort of trying to do and would like to try and do more with this project in the university. Um, yes. So one thing that I do is um, your plastic filter. So when people think about um, plastic, you know, you can be like, oh, I'm recycling it or like, Disposing of it correctly, but um, it doesn't break, you know, it lasts forever, you know, plastic is still here. Uh, and it's, everyone knows about their carbon footprint and like trying to, you can offset that, you know, you can off the tree. But uh, plastic lasts forever, so kind of there's no way to offset the amount of plastic you use. It has to kind of start with you and like actually using less and all of these things. Um, so I then like um, oh so maybe for this was uh, you can collect plastic from the location it's in or I think you want to do it in multiple locations. Um, but then you can sort out all the colours and everything because that always attracts people like and then sort of like a picnic or something and you can um, like picture your plastics and arrange it and um, like melt them and then put the stuff in it and you have a physical plastic footprint and then maybe keep doing that and send a reminder for them or make a little good displayed but because you often feel like you're one person what can you do and it's like very you feel kind of very overwhelmed when you start researching it as an issue um but then sort of something like this it's like if everyone does a bit then it does become mass and then it does have an impact uh, um, and then also um so most of my stuff has been small base so i'd like to use these sort of techniques and ways of transforming these materials and then use them in larger scales as well. Um, so uh, one thing with the fishing nets is just from simply like dyeing them, you can just like a dye with the it's not like a crazy um, but then it is it becomes uh, transformed and elevated and um, I would like to maybe do like a sculpture with um, the dyed fishing nets and then um, fish and things and use like the sort of techniques and um, sort of the like more detailed techniques techniques as well as then um, making something that people can interact with more because uh, I think there are lots of things to do with like fish and plastic if you aren't aware of like speaking to people because people don't know that like this fish is very good plastic and all this sort of chemicals and pollutants and things. Um, and so yeah I think using interactive sculpture that can just engage people visually and then once you've got that attention and then start talking to them more about the issues and Thank <laughs> you.